There's a movie called Rust and Bone. A young man is in the mountains in Europe somewhere training to be a boxer, and it's winter and it's snowing. And his young son, who's about four or five years old, um, comes up for the weekend, and um, they're out playing in the snow, and they've been sledding and sliding and skating, and they come to this frozen lake, and they're sliding along on the frozen lake, and their dad turns around to urinate, and he turns back, and he sees the sled out there in the middle of the lake, and he doesn't see his child. So he um, runs out to where the sled is, and he sees a hole in the ice, and the ice is covered with snow, so he's brushing, frantically brushing the snow off the ice, and he can't find the child. And then he sees the child under the ice, and they show you the child floating under the ice. And the man is a boxer, and he takes his fists, and he bangs on the ice, and bangs on the ice, and bangs on the ice. Well, that image of your child drowning under the ice and not being able to get at the child to save him, that to me is what it's like to be a parent of a person with BPD. And it's what it's like to be the child of or the partner of. It's the sense of being helpless, of watching somebody in extreme danger, pain, um, threatened by life, and being unable to do anything about it. But the trick is that the brain does some really clever things. When people get that kind of a feeling, it's very painful. And very often, they turn that feeling into a secondary emotion which is anger, and they wind up being angry at the person with BPD. And that's why this is such a difficult, difficult disorder, because sometimes the anger that comes from the other person is because of their feeling of powerlessness and helplessness.